He madring kila ma tulunga pala mitya daya moda diko Maudyang na kaniva sinang bhaya pararva kya riva prartita Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamaya yang Thang mun chan gir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatu mam Namaste. I would like to share with you a great secret. But first I have to give a little background so you can appreciate it properly. Lord Shiva is the Supreme God and he has five faces. Four of the faces face the four cardinal directions, east, south, west, and north. And they represent the four amnayas or spiritual paths of karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and jnana yoga, respectively. But he also has a fifth face, which is secret. And this face faces upward. It's called the urdhvamnaya. The urdhvamnaya, because it's completely spiritual, has no dogma, no teaching, no rituals. You know, it's completely spiritual and internal. So when the sadhaka practices urdhvamnaya, then his practice is completely on the spiritual platform and it brings very quick results. So let me read a few sutras from the third chapter of the Kularnava Tantra about this mantra. Shiva said, The great mantra presiding over the Urdhvamnaya is the Sri Paraprasada mantra, the Hangsa. In this mantra, Ha stands for Shiva, the Purusha, the He, and Sa stands for Shakti, the Prakriti, the She. Both together make the creation and so are present in each form in creation. Each breath of its life in its outgoing movement, expiration, spells the Ha, and in its indrawing movement, inspiration, spells the Sa, thus automatically repeating the mantra of the truth of its existence. Now, Kuleshani, the magnificence of the mantra is revealed. Its characteristics have not previously been spoken by me. I speak of them now because of your love. Listen, O one dear to me as life itself. The mantra called Sri Paraprasada is the chief mantra situated in the Hurdvamnaya. Whoever knows this mantra, which is the supreme creator, becomes like me. Ha Sa is the pathway breath takes in living creatures. This mantra exists in the form of exhalation and inhalation, dearest one. Just as clouds cannot exist without wind, and just as the sky is without limit, so the world cannot exist except by Sri Paraprasada Mantra. The world of immovable and moving things comes from the Sri Paraprasada Mantra. Devi, this mantra is therefore known as Sri Paraprasada Mantra, the supreme quintessence, having the nature of Satchit Ananda, truth, consciousness, bliss, Shiva and Shakti, bestower of both enjoyment and liberation, with and without karma, with and without qualities, gunas. Listen, dearest. There is no mantra equal to the Sri Paraprasada mantra. It is supreme knowledge, 
It is supreme tapas. It is supreme meditation. It is supreme worship. It is supreme initiation. It is supreme mantra recitation. It is the highest of all tattvas. It is the greatest of all vows. It is the best of sacrifices. It is the highest of the high. It is supreme bliss. It gives the best result. It is the very absolute Parabrahman. It is the highest refuge. It is the most secret of all secrets. After knowing this quintessential and boon-giving mantra, one always becomes steady, dear one. So that's pretty high praise. And coming from Shiva, the highest authority, we have to take it very seriously. Now, of course, there's a lot more to the explanation of this mantra than I just read, which are simply a few excerpts from a long chapter. So I've prepared a document which you can link to in the video description and download. And this document will explain everything in all detail. So now I just want to give a summary of the practice. We recently released a music track which gives the beginning form of the practice. Basically, one chants mentally, hung on the outbreath, and sa on the inbreath, hung sa. And this is done in a regulated way. But this is only the beginning level of the practice to establish the habit. As the practice develops, the breath becomes more and more subtle. This is also described in the sutras on Anapanasati by the Buddha. That as one puts attention on the breath, at first, it's a little bit forced. It's conditioned by the mind. But soon, what happens is the mind settles down. Soon, after maybe 50 hours of practice, <laughs> the mind will settle down and the breath will become calm, very light and slow. The heartbeat will also become very slow and you'll begin to go into actually dream consciousness, svapna consciousness. The attention will turn inward and one will be admitted into the subtle layers of reality. Now, the only way I can describe this is it's heavenly. It's like going to heaven. Everything is beautiful. Everything is blissful. Huh? There is no suffering in this state. There is no body either, no mind, no personality, no ego, no desires. It is a state of perfect equilibrium, perfect joy, and perfect peace. Oh, but it gets better. As the practice deepens, and one goes deeper and deeper into this heavenly state, wide awake. All kinds of visions will come, all kinds of music, beautiful forms, all very abstract, huh? not the kind of music or forms that we see in the outer world, but the special subtle forms of the inner world which are pretty much indescribable. I thought maybe I can make some artwork or animations about these forms, but then I realized it would take more time to make the artwork than I've been putting in my practice, and I don't want to lose that time. I want to use the time for the practice. So you're just going to have to do the practice yourself and get to this level and experience it directly. Oh, but then you enter into the higher levels, 
the sushupti consciousness, deep sleep. All thoughts stop. All perceptions fade away. Consciousness itself actually disappears. And one enters into deep samadhi. The breath is still going on, but it's the same kind of breathing that happens when we're deep asleep. It's regulated by the autonomic nervous system, and there's no, our, our will is not involved at all. So we're not conscious of the body, we're not conscious of the mind, we're not conscious of the gross breath, but there's a kind of subtle breath which is, again, impossible to understand. <laughs> and the Buddha says, in the, actually one of the suttas that we recently covered in this series on meditation on the breath, Anapanasati, he says, this leads to the fulfillment of all desires, the attainment of the great fruit, which is Nibbana, and one is able to taste the nectar of immortality. Let me tell you, this is true. You have to practice this. On the surface, it seems like a very simplistic thing. Hang Sa. What could be so powerful about it? Well, what it is, of course, is simply a device to get you to concentrate on the breath and stop thinking and stop paying attention to the senses, to draw the mind inwards and to create a platform for higher meditation. This is the same thing that Buddha describes in Anapanasati or Anapanasmriti, which is in his system taking note of the qualities of the breath, short, long, hot, cold, peaceful, agitated, conditioned by the mind or not conditioned by the mind, and so on. But instead of on the mental platform uh, using all these different categories, this practice by Shiva goes directly to the breath itself and simply gives the mind a very simple mantra, Hang Sa, <laughs> to keep it out of trouble and eventually, by fixing it on this one vibration, to allow the mind to become quiet and get out of the way. So, I very highly recommend this practice. This is uh, something I recently discovered. You know, you may not have the background to be able to do this. Shiva says in another part, which you can read in the explanation, the document linked in the description. He says that having faith in practicing this mantra or remembering this mantra or even just thinking about it is a result of many, many pious activities in previous lives. So, you know, a lot of people read, oh, Buddha said you should concentrate on the breath. Great, I'm going to try that. And they sit down and do it for about five or ten minutes. And then they say, well, that doesn't do anything. <laughs> and give it up. But actually, the practice takes some time to have its effect. You have to have enough faith, enough motivation to stick with it through the first, I don't know, week or two. Or maybe longer for some people. I don't know. For me, it happened in a few days, but I've already uh, have a lot of experience that I'm not a typical person when it comes to these spiritual practices. So the more background you have, the more punya, pious karma you have, the quicker it will take effect. So I highly recommend this practice and I wish you all the best and I hope that you will perform this practice and it brings you to complete enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. 
Aung Shakti Aung.